thanks for life and a mighty life giver. We give thanks for all good things around us are sent from Zion above. So we praise for our praise for, for his divine love, his sincere love. Give thanks definitely. As we are a bit tardy today, you know, as we are under 6.33. So we give thanks. And sometimes people say 666 is bad, really. But you know, 666 is the electronic configuration of the carbon element, which is six electrons, six protons, and six neutrons, which is the number of the man, the, the, the carbon knitted being, the black man. So we give thanks for life and a mighty life given. and we give thanks definitely for this divine opportunity to be with you today as it's always an honor and a privilege to be at your service, you know, because they say, well, I mean, you have to be a servant to your people, you have to serve your people. So give thanks for that opportunity to be able to serve you as my people and we definitely give thanks as even as we in this moment of can evil, you know, we could have some good coming in, you know, because, you know, we are in Pantheon Bra season, you know, and Bacchanal and when and go down and don't get up, you know, and get pregnant by the roadside season, you know what I mean? When we really examine, that's why you're not really supposed to feel sorry for people, you know, because people, people have to be held responsible. Because you know that even if you say, well, go and sin no more, right? And the sins that you have perpetuated based upon the laws of nature, these things that don't go unpunished, you know, they, they, there are always repercussions from the ill actions that we actually perpetuate, the things that we do day in, day out. So when we examine wholeheartedly, I mean, and we, we need a level of honesty because we, we're supposed to be God-loving people. You know, you go to court and you swear on the Bible and you go to church every Sunday, your high heels and your short skirt and three quarters of your breast bumping out. Yeah, man. And then yet still, we, I mean, we, we praise Jesus every day, man. Not we, I mean, the great majority of people praise Jesus every day, man. You know, G-E-G-E-E-Z-U-S. -E -E right? And then, yet still we fail to be honest. Honest, like that, that level of honesty and sincerity where we know, well, look, I'm an honest man. I'm sincere. What I say, I mean it. Right? I mean, we, we, we. I think they gave up maybe ten million dollars for carnival. Yeah, or more, probably ten or something like that. I stand to be corrected. And carnival is a fete. That, 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 that has nothing to do with culture. It's a fact that people get drunk, lots of alcohol consumption. So okay, you say, all right, if you're in a country and you want to do something whereby the rum sellers and the rum producers will make a money, all right, so you could give them carnival. You understand? All right, so plenty of rum and plenty of things sell out and plenty of people die off and kill off themselves. Can evil. I mean, whatever that's evil that you want to do, you could do it in that season there, man. You could drink all the rum that you want to drink. Get drunk in the gutter and vomit and everybody will be laughing. You know, you could throw away your nice long skirt and your nice uniform for, the, for any of the banks that you work in. And you could put on a panty and a bra and walk the same street. The same street that you'd be walking if you're nice suit and nice thing set up and thing. I mean, that same street, Jeremy Street, or John Compton Highway, same street you're driving. Boy, you could you'll walk that up with panty and bra and no problem. You know, so if it is that we are honest, I mean, just, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not making, I'm, I'm not here to make anything up. I'm just saying. I think they give about the 10 million. I think so. Probably a bit more. Right? 
And I don't know who gave it. I just see that on the paper. All right, and I heard somebody say, yeah, why they give them under 10 or something like that. And yet still we are aware that we have a healthcare crisis in the country. Everybody talks about a healthcare crisis. People should be ashamed of themselves. You know? Okay, you talking like, okay, you have a healthcare crisis. You don't have money to run hospital. Right? St. Jude's Hospital up to a day like today cannot be completed. You have people in a old rotten, licking, dirty, mole infested, stinking stadium. Sick people. Pregnant woman dying, giving birth, and all the people going there and then. Uh, oops, you make it, oops, you not, oops, you make it, oops, you not, 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 oops, you make it. Victoria Hospital and Nemta. I mean, come on. We're talking about we have a health crisis. The country doesn't have money. Right? And then. I think that you could have just paused Carnival for a year, man. Nobody would lose anything from that. Okay, all right. They probably. The distillers and the rum and them things and want to rum shop. So, okay, all right, whatever. But at least that 10 million could have gone a long way in putting the St. Jude's Hospital closer to finished. Completion. But just like the patient dying with kidney failure and will say, bye. I like my red meat, you know, man. Ah, 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 and they say, other uh, man with lung cancer still puffing up on his cigarettes and his black tobacco. <laughs> and he's still puffing at suicidal people. We know all these things there and yet still. We make a conscious decision. You make a conscious decision. A decision that you are aware of. Knowing that we have a healthcare crisis, you know, we could freely. And people will love that man. Yeah, man, they can drink some chick they can drink some rum and eat some some chicken that spoil and two days that they're well seasoned and thing. Just like when you used to go at Asu Square and then things. I remember as a young man, as a young child, you know, coming up north and going Asu Square. You know, and when I was coming up on holidays by my father, you know what I mean? You go at Asu Square. And then the, the last day of Asu Square, boy, I mean, you used to smell some rotten, some rotten chicken on the grills. Yeah, man. I'm telling you, man. I'm about making it up. You know, go, go to any, okay, library day or Pexon day or Souffre day and thing. And they have three days. The first day, the second. When the second day come, you're already smelling barbecue thing that they're already stinking and thing. People see that, boy. Because... Rotten flesh and rum goes good. Oh, Gasson. Quasi so sassy, say, say, Gasson. Oh, my God. I'm it is work. I'm valid, sir. Yeah, man. So when we examine our predicament, when it comes to our health care, how bad things are. Things are awful, you know. Things are horrible, awful. When it comes to the health care of us as a people. You know how many 40 year old fellas ending up with stroke? You know how many young women just cannot have children? You know how many young women if their breasts rotting on them, breast cancer? You know how many young children if lymphoma? You know how many women if cervical cancer? You know how many men if prostate cancer? You know how many people if kidney failure? You know how many diabetics around the place amputated? You know how many people with high blood pressure? Now many women have prostate, not prostate, are women have prostate? No. Fibroids, <laughs> polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now many women like that? Plenty. Plenty. A lot. Trust me, I'm telling you, man. Plenty of our 45 and 50 year old men, the mouth on the side with stroke. Plenty of them. High blood pressure and the have to spend seven days at the hospital, three days at the hospital. And when they come out, trouble. Look around, man. I see a woman today. They say, Priest. Priest. I'm on the laxative. I want you from the drink tonight. 
Get on my belly to come down flat to jump off for carnival tomorrow. I say, eh. So you don't even want the, the, the laxative to cleanse yourself. Right, you just want the laxative. Just to get the belly, belly flat. So at least you could, you know, look good in your panty and bra tomorrow. You understand? So when you put your little panty and bra and you're jumping up and thing, you know? Remember, you know, you're willing to pay $900 for a costume with two little pieces of cloth. Two little pieces of cloth. That any craftsperson can make. Two little pieces of cloth. Not even cotton or silk. Some old cheap nylon or polyester thing. Right? It's some old toxic heavy metal sequin from some old country over there. Right? That's what we utilize. We invest our money in wholeheartedly and then we, we talk about, I don't know who feels bad about what I'm saying, but I mean, come on. We're supposed to have a healthcare crisis. If you are on the waiting line for dialysis, your kidneys have failed, your options is $1,500 per treatment at any of the, at, at the, at the other private hospital. $1,500 per dialysis treatment. If you cannot get it at Victoria Hospital, Man trouble, man trouble in camp. That means that for, if you had that three times a week, that's 4,500. So in 10 weeks, that's 45,000. Yeah, in 20 weeks. 20 weeks, that's $90,000. You're, you're not talking about a year yet, eh? Not even talking about a baby being born yet. So when you check a year, you know how much money you have to pay just to stay alive? Right? So come on. So why is it that we consciously make these decisions as a people and accept and tolerate these decisions with no protests. I mean, we rejoice. Oh, my brother. You're <laughs> celebrating foolishness. You know, and yet still, you want to crucify someone for this and crucify someone for that and you stop your foolishness and thing and start to you know start to check up exactly what what happening in the country and look at look at look at I mean and and you, and you I'm talking to you I'm talking to you because it's you I mean you you sit down and you allow these things to happen I'm sure that ten million dollars could have gone into Saint Jude's Hospital man or I mean they could have given me that money I could have, I could have built a nice hospital like that yeah man nice yeah man top top of the line thing yeah man. And, Everybody from down south could have. Yeah, man, yeah, man, of course, man, yeah, of course. Of course. Come on. That's where we are as a people, you know, and then people say, oh, by priest, you know, some of the doctors cannot talk because if they talk, you know. I say, they say, well, because the voice of justice is silent, wickedness prevails. You know, because if, uh, if, 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 if the just and the right, the upright and the and the people who know the truth, they stand up and they speak out. All them foolishness stopped long time already, man. People who consider themselves when they're foolishness. So that pause can evil for a year. Eek. Pause. And all flow and digicel and, you know, and distillers and Heineken and, you know, Piton and all these alcoholic beverages. All the companies, they sponsor Can Evil Man. They pump in money in Can Evil Man. They sponsor that. They, you, uh, okay, okay, right. So, if you take all the money that is sponsored by the rum companies, and you take all the money sponsored by Flo and Lime, and uh, Flo and Lime is the same thing? Okay, all right. Be Flo and Orange. Okay, Orange, okay, right. Flo or uh, Orange is maybe in Martinique, Orange. Okay, Flo and Digicel and all them different things there. All them monies that they put together. Why you don't sponsor the St. Jude's Hospital? Right? So, if all of the, these corporate entities could come together and put 5 million for Can Evil, and the government put 10 million, why, okay, why if the government put 10, the corporate entities, the private companies can come and put another 10 million and say, well, yeah, man, 20 million for St. Jude's. We pause Can Evil this year. We would pause Can Evil. Nobody would, would die. Right, but every minute that you procrastinate in fixing up the hospital and giving the doctors and the nurses down at St. Jude's some proper working conditions, people dying. 
Oops, man just dead a while ago. I know, man. Yeah, man. So, a place of people supposed to go to live. A place of people supposed to go to live. They dying. So everybody afraid to go to hospital now, you know, man. Oops, you make it. Oops, you don't. Oops, 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 you don't. Oops, you don't. Oops, you make it. Oops, you don't. Oops, you don't. Oops, you don't. Oops, you make it. That's how it is, man. So instead of going to the hospital to get healed, you go to the hospital to die. So now we feel like I'm a two pepper because you have a son. Lola Basil Capon. The boy feel like I'm a two pepper because you have lemon if it's in the hospital side. I say, say, twaka. So I mean, come on. So why is it that as a nation of people, when we see things like that, we don't stand up against it? By Prisca Lash. Prisca Lash. Boy, you have to watch this on the TV, you know, man. Them kind of things you say in there. Uh, Prisca Lash, you know, my friend. Prisca Lash. Uh, foolishness. So you know what I'm saying is right. You're like a little coward. You're in a little corner. Your children dying. Your grandchildren dying. Your auntie dying, your uncle dying, your, your prostate cancer in your testicles growing already. Your woman have cancer in her breast growing already. You refuse to take a stance for something right and upful and say, Yeah, my lord, man, give thanks, honorable. Yeah, man, tomorrow I go and, you know, I look as a, as a one man army going to protest against them things. They're going to get the money to the St. Jude's Hospital. Why can not tell me that kind of foolish talk? I don't let talk to me. You, you know that is the truth. So, okay, so who in their right mind? Who in their right mind? Right? As a God-loving person, who in their right mind, their right mind, honest and truthful, loyal to self and to the nation, would say that if they have $10 million to spend, they would put it in carnival, and then the private entities would put another 5 or 6 or 7 or another 10, Right, and then them, the same set of people cannot come together and put that same money in doing a good hospital long south. But it's the same people who have to come and, 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 and use their cell phone and, and make, make, make money. The same set of people, I mean, come on. Come on. So I'm not saying anything wrong, am I? Am I saying anything wrong? Am I saying something wrong? Okay, come on. So if it is that I'm, I, I, I am saying something right, If I'm saying something right, I don't know. Yeah, the, I, I, is, is the live stream on the Facebook live stream? People asking me, is the live, is the live stream, Facebook live stream, Calabash official? You know, you know. I am just asking. I I am. Yes. It's up. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm going to send that message on WhatsApp. You know how it is. Yes, yes, honorable. I mean, definitely it's up. I think it's um, Calabash. You know, just go on Calabash live stream. I definitely think it's up. Love. You know, and blast it. You know, we have our people all around the world watching this thing. You know? So come on, let's blast this thing and let the people see what's going on. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to night, it's, this foolishness have to stop, man. You know? This food doesn't have to stop. You see, when we really analyze and we see, well, the everyday decisions that's taken, I mean, come on, man. We have to do something. We have to come together as a people. We have to decide and say, well, look, okay, all right. That's where we want things to go. People dying in the stadium. Every, all, all, all pregnant women are afraid. You know the kind of horror stories you hear, in eh? You know the kind of horror. I mean, we have horrible stories, you know. Horror stories. Yet still, everybody say talking about the health crisis. Then, can't we do something about it? Of course we can do something about the health crisis. Of course we can do something about the health crisis. We can. But we're wasting time and people just are playing around and playing politics and I'll die later. I die in every day. So whatever foolishness they do, people will come and make a decision and say, Oh, if you're my friend, my brethren, and I do something wrong, I'd love it if you say, Priest, you know what you do not do right, you know, my Lord. 
I check yourself on them things, yeah, man. You can't see me doing something as folly and then you just, you're around me and you're there. <laughs> Not my friend. Right? A true friend, a true brethren is the man that will come and tell you, honorable, them things not good, honorable. Check yourself, my lord. Oh, God, yeah, well, yeah, my lord, just check yourself, my lord. Right? So, if it is that we cannot come and face one another in honesty and truth and express ourselves in sincerity, then at least we could say, well, look, man, I tell them people that, you know, man, because I know that nobody can really, I mean, I'm, I'm Christ the Creator. You know, I, I know that at least if they said, well, nobody didn't say, no, just, I might. Yeah, man, I, I do my part. You, can't, you cannot say that. Even if, if you never thought about it, I come and make you think about it. So right now you have no excuse. All them excuses you have, they're gone. But right now you know what's going on, right? So you cannot say, well, oh, I never know. Okay, all right, but because you know the truth. The truth is that we just talk about healthcare crisis. We talk, talk about all that type of thing, but people don't really care, man. People have spent money, all kind of crap. You know, I mean, yes, can you help with a pause this year? And open a new hospital, even if it's for a month. Right? Put a thing on St. 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 Hospital. Yeah, man. You know how many sick people are on the place? You know how many women with cancer? You know how many young girls? 22, 21, 23, 24, 25. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30 with cancer. It's a sad situation. Trust me, I'm telling you, it's sad. You know, and, a lot, and the thing about it is that, a lot of that, you remember, you know, back I had wed. Things are already so tough on these people there now. And they have their little job, working, some little place there. And then right now, they have to go and organize barbecue. Priest said, barbecue, you have to organize to raise some money for me to get treatment. So every time they have to do a barbecue to sell roasted chicken and rum to make money to go and take chemo. So the same rum and chicken and barbecue, I give them the cancer. They, 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 they'll sell it to make money to go and take a chemical that's going to kill them. Everybody know chemo don't work. If chemo was working, if the present healthcare system was functional, if the if chemo on radio was working and, and cutting off the breast was working, what would be happening right now with the number of cancer cases? <laughs> It would have gone down. If this thing was working right now, our oncologist would have been sitting down there, bored and thing. Nobody had come into him because, boy, that chemo thing working so good, guys. So you feel, yeah, man, because you feel good now because the chemo thing working. But why are you hearing more people getting cancer? They go there, right? When they hear they have the cancer, boop, two, three, four, five days, they're dead. Six months, all their hair fall off. They get Maggie, Maggie. All their nails get black. Their eyes get yellow. Start wearing diaper, boop, they're dead. That's what the treatments that they have to offer us do these days. That's it. I'm just telling you the truth now, man. Why are you going to get upset with me? You can't get upset with me. Go and check it out yourself. You ever had somebody with cancer? Your mother ever had breast cancer? Did you look at the breast? When it began to get black and rot and began to just bleed and drip on the ground? People go through these things every single day. So if it is that we are aware of such a healthcare crisis, All right now, there will be no people selling soft drink, Coca-Cola and Sprite. Coke is not, it's Sprite is not right. None of them things they would be selling on our school grounds. No sodas would be selling on our school grounds. 
No junk food would be selling on our, on our school grounds. Children would be encouraged to eat huge portions of vegetables. Fresh juices would be, would be given to our children. Why? Because we are aware of the health crisis. And now we are instituting change. We are investing in the present for a better future. Eh? You, they, you, they're giving people money to have holy bar rum. Fry plen plenty chicken. Chicken they import that thin container for 10 years, 5 years, 6 years. If you have one there for a year, boy, that's good, boy. Uh huh. Not only in the container for a year, got something that fresh. Eh? 7, 8, 9, 10, 15 years sometimes, and things are in some container, some old place. Somewhere in there with that land on the harbor in St. Lucia. So you have to spend a couple of days and you take that. So I have more like come at now. Vive and poo, it's not your sisters. Huh? And then, that's what, that's, what, that's what you're promoting. You're giving money to promote the same things that cause diabetes, that cause high blood pressure, that cause crime and violence. Because you know when carnival comes, everybody. Yeah, you have police in military uniform around the place with a big gun in their waist because you know carnival violence back as a by show gas by as by red. Yeah, man, carnival, everybody red, everybody drunk, fighting and things. So you are the same crime we're complaining about. We are going to be investing money in them same things. And you're telling me this and you're telling me that. Come on, man. Joke. Joke. So when I speak, I speak out of my heart. I speak out of the abundance of what I'm saying is just the truth, man. Isn't it that people concerned about crime? So I give people wrong and think and you know that when carnival you need plenty of police because they're going to have plenty of fight, plenty of stabbing and plenty of stealing and plenty of things. Okay? Yeah man, of course. We're in a wicked time. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? This time we do give turns for life and my life I've given. I pray that, you know, um, if I was rough, I meant to be. If I offend you, I am happy. Because if you take offense, then you might want to do something to change. Eh? If you feel bad, that's good, no man. Eh? That's some my eh? If you feel bad, you think I'm going to cry for you. Yeah, man, you have to feel bad. The man said the truth is an offense, but not, not a sin. Okay, all right? So give thanks. Well, I mean, you know how it is. You know, we're on a 7 o'clock hour. We're going to take an intercession. When we come again, we are going to introduce our sister here with us. That's going to give us a little time um, in her healing formula of energy healing. All right? And then we're going to the gist of the of the matter open up the lines as you know this is we are we have can good not can evil here can good okay yeah man not can evil can good and can right you know can love right so give thanks for this divine moment when you come again we're going to have sister ramasa giving us some health tips when it comes to the overall wellness of relationships okay all right so give thanks for the mighty life giver when we come forward, bless it. Thanks to technology, we can still enjoy some of life's most important moments. Just sign up to check your balance, manage multiple accounts, and pay your bills online through your bank. Even while doing what matters most. It takes just a few minutes to set up from a computer, tablet, or smartphone. Lucilic My Account, a free, fast, and easy way to view and pay your electricity bills. Every new start, oh yeah, to help you succeed. Help you succeed. You need a bank with a heart with all that you will need. B O S L B O S every step of the way. B O S L.
Las vezes a fait femme. Moi, je Comment dire que tu as tout ce travail ça tu as la jeune. Oubliez ça, Thomas, et tu as fait Noël. Ça, il fait nous. Madame, n'a pas priorité de Show off, madame. Qui ce que pas écouté sa radio et TV à la radio? On n'a pas empêché gloire à la fondation. Fait canal. On jette goutier qui croise, en masse glo, mette baoui en bagoutier. The ladies adapting to climate change. Don't hit emulate. Cox, quand nous avons été en mode, qui ça nous a fait? What is our main problem, you know? What I see is more drainage, some trees to help with the land seepage, and a little retaining wall. On a mis sous jusqu'à hété zodi en wa vina. Et là, si on est pour tout bout de ça, you need to stop it tout. Day. Climate change impacts will keep getting worse. Starting with the basics can help your family reduce loss and save lives. Well, I said to come and say no more stuff as I heard here because I quit that. When you are here, you are malade. So I got to see my son by his son. I got to see my son. Pour garder si sa vie en l'air bien. Bon, on gagne plus. Et mais c'est plus simple pour faire même bail là. Venez garder si vous avez aidé, yon moun. Yon pas vous essayez pour yon même. Mais venez trahir yon moun pour bail qui boit ça. Il y a des gens qui ont dit yon paye. Bien que yon paye bail ça, puisque yon paye une injection. Qu'est-ce que vous avez pour dire? Bail paye, c'est un bail politique. Après, ça va une politique encore. Ça va une paye à l'idée. Tout le monde fait une contribution. Bail dit accent. Je suis venu ici, j'ai qu'un secteur pour vivre dans le Jackson. La blé connecte nous tous. Share life, give blé. Pour plus d'informations, vous pouvez contacter le service de la Lucia Blé Bank à 452530. E-mail nous à slubledbank.com. Save a life, give blé. Rastafari, definitely we do give thanks for life and the mighty life given. We give thanks for this divine opportunity to be with you once more in this sacred space. In you know, in you know, we love the iron name, right? Yeah, love the iron sincerely, right? I've I've given my life, my life work has been for this love of myself first and foremost the love for my people the honest and fervent I don't know if this is a proper English word but so what you know you know how it is man I was brought down here in captivity I'm, I'm not English just trying to talk, talk some dyslexic language seeing s-i-n and s-e-e-n I, I, I have seen this before, and I have seen, seen and seen. I, wait, wait, wait. Only language like that, boy. Terrible language. Gets you depressed. Anyway, you know how it is with us, man. I mean, it's out of the sincerity and the purity and the love of our heart, we utter the words that we utter, and then you don't know how it is. You know what I mean? If it is that we're going to be a better nation, a better nation of champions, a nation of healthy people, people that's well, people that's strong, I mean, we have to first and foremost become honest with ourselves. Let's say, well, look, look, Gasson, let us do a little at a time to uplift our. You know how these people fight the herbs? They fight the herbs as if it's some type of a. And yet, still, brethren, when was the last time you hear somebody die from drinking a herb? Never. Right? And then. People that die at the hospital all the time, but they want to talk about the herbs, man, and the herbs this. If people were using the herbs every single day, I'm not waiting on when, when they're dead on the bed to want to come and try and use a herb. You'd have a lot of people all now strong and healthy. You know, our four parents used to make us drink our herbal teas every single morning and every single night. They call it lingette. Alright, so let us go forward to this ancient liberty. And let's see exactly how it is that we could uplift ourselves. Tomorrow, the carnival day, we are open tomorrow on Jeremy Street. I'm in the Liberty 
restaurant will be open. I mean to provide you with some nutritious foods. In this world of sin, I mean, there are some good things you could actually come and pick. So if you're in your carnival destination and, you know, on Jeremy Street and thing, you know, instead of going and drink some, some poisonous stuff, you know, come and get some good smoothies and some sea moss porridge and these things there and some nice sea moss and some nice power brew. So at least you, you become more powerful and you could see really what carnival really is about. Definitely, so we give thanks. Honorable sister, how are you doing today? Blessed love. I am well blessed. Thank you again for another opportunity to be here, brothers and sisters. Blessed love to everyone. It is Almighty's good pleasure that all his children should prosper and be in good health, even as our souls prosper. For the kingdom of Zion is a place of righteousness and a people with one heart and one mind. And in light of this carnival season that priests began speaking about, I would like my brothers and sisters to know that we as spiritual leaders, we have seen the need to speak out about the wellness and being prosperous just as Almighty desire us to be prosperous. But the truth of the matter is if we as a people, if we are not enlightened and aware of the evil devices we are going to be deceived. And before I even say anything, I must say that all of us were deceived at one point in time. But it's because of the power of the Almighty who brings us in, because there are many of us who are not partakers of the carnival season, because as priests said, we value well-being and good health, and we would have really appreciate it if the monies that were invested in the carnival season was used in facilitating good health care for our people but as a people we need to be aware that in the book of ephesians in the holy the holy bible it tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood so our battle here is not against the political leaders of the world the presidents the Prime Minister of our country and his cabinet of ministers. Our battle is not against individuals. But if you are a conscious and aware being, you would understand that the battle is against spiritual powers in high places. Now I say that under the authority of the Almighty. Because the Bible says greater is the power that is in us as enlightened beings than the power that is in the world. So when our leaders make decisions in cabinet to invest monies into activities that are not going to bring the wellness to a people or for us to be righteous as what Zion is supposed to be. Zion is the heart and the mind of Almighty's children. But we live in a society that is controlled by spiritual powers in high places, by thrones, by dominions, by powers. And if we as a people believe that our battle is to fight against ministers and prime ministers and persons in leadership, we have been misguided also. But if we take the battle in its proper context and we who have given our lives over to the Almighty, we stand against what the enemy is doing with his spiritual powers and we pray against because this is what we what we want we want the souls of almighty's children to prosper we want to live in zion we want to reign in a righteous society for the word of god says that when a people have their eyes and their minds and their hearts stared upon the Almighty, the nation will prosper. The kings, the rulers of the nation will bow and your country will be prosperous. But when our eyes are not on the Almighty, we are ruled by the powers that exist. And the only way we can disarm the work of the enemy is if we pray against what is happening. We speak a lot. 
but we are not doing what we as enlightened beings are equipped with we have the authority to bound and to stop and to cancel the work of the enemy but we sit and we look at what is happening and as pre said we say nothing and also we don't even pray but if we take up our our almighty's authority in our lives we will intercede on behalf of the souls that are preparing to go and put alcohol in their temple and destroy their livers and their stomachs and their kidneys if we have love in our hearts and realize this is the work of the enemy upon our own brothers and sisters and we send out because the word of god says when you decree a thing it happens and you speak love you cancel the work of the enemy you stop the accidents that are about to happen when you open up your mouth and you decree the word but if we as conscious beings we just sit around and we say okay we have carnival for two days and we allow the powers that is invisible to our eyes to just operate then we are not operating in our priesthood because we are priests of the most high and if we do not send out love if we do not cancel the work of the enemy then we will have people getting into accidents people will lose their lives people will get diseases and all sorts of evil will continue with this thing that we call carnival but i encourage my brothers and sisters who have been enlightened and that the spirit of god has touched your heart and your mind that you intercede on behalf of our fellow brothers and sisters and send out love send out forgiveness send out the spirit and the power of the authority of the most high and the king of kings and the lord of lord who is the seed of our consciousness will be conquered if we take up and we do what is expected of us as ambassadors of the most high uh, ambassadors of right of right of righteousness righteousness yes. i mean every, every i mean every um pastor and every minister and every priest i mean catholic or whatever they are you know, every person who who has that yearning, I, I, I mean, every citizen is supposed to stand up because I mean, we do have a very um, urgent need, a very urgent. I mean, I mean, from last month we need that hospital to be opened up in 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 Beaufort. I mean, from last year, for the last seven years, you know. So it's good that at least you know if you and your feminine energy could come and and give everything on it and as we proceed as we after we have opened up the line I, I pray that people themselves could take more control of the healthcare and see what is it that they can do as a man or as a woman to assist the nation not just sit down and wait for oh, when preschool has come oh, I watch you every Sunday boy, and think, oh, man, good program and good work man it's not my work it's all over and I work you know and that's what people need to realize that the work is not a work that is just preschool ash work or something that Christians have to come and say, you in your divine self, in your God self, supposed to be able to sit down and see, well, that's not just, that's not right. Let me say something about it. So when you tell someone about it and then, then, then they get in light, then they can tell somebody about it. And you understand, so the cycle actually continues. So give thanks for the power of love energy. And you say you have the, the love energy to send out to these people to, to, to stop the accidents. This is what we focus in. We all have this love energy within us. It is called prana. Alright? Now, when Almighty sent his son into this world, he sent his son to take care of a problem that could not be eradicated or fixed by no one else but Almighty himself. So when Almighty fixed the sin problem that exists on this planet and he went back as the conquering lion and the tribe of Judah and he was coronated and he sat upon his throne, he left the power of the Holy Spirit upon his children on this planet. Now, as we talk about the carnival season, I started out very carefully by saying that all of us, at one point in time lived in darkness or we operated in darkness all right but
through the conscious work of Almighty, we were drawn out of this dark cloud. And what was so interesting, you said, Chris, that many believers who call upon Jesus and, and we talk about Jesus and we see this thing called carnival and all the evil that is, you know, propagated through it. And we sit silently and sometimes it troubles me. But I know it, I should not allow that to trouble me because everybody operates from the knowledge and the experience and the power that they have. So when we see things like this, we see the corruption, we know how our healthcare system stands at this point in time. Yet still, where are the righteous men and women who will say, no, let us stand up, let us lobby, let us have discussion, let us protest, let us pray, let us do something, you know? to work against what is happening. But what I usually see in circles is people who are professed believers in Almighty. We sit in circles and we talk about what the prime minister is not doing, what ministers are not doing, what the UN is not doing, what the, um, the world leaders are not doing. And then we fail to realize what the Holy Scripture says. Our battle is not against human beings. Our battle is against spiritual powers. Now, if you are not spiritually equipped, then obviously you cannot operate in the spiritual realm. You have to fight a battle with flesh and flesh because that's where you operate in from. But if you are a conscious being and you recognize that the power that was in Almighty Himself is now in you when you are now on the seat of righteousness or you are on the side of righteousness, the Bible declares that you have the authority to bind things in heaven and earth and to loose things in heaven and earth. But because we do not operate, we do not function in the authority that is given to us. You know why? We cannot do it because we have sin in our lives. The Bible says that if you have sin in your life, you are a powerless individual. And so first we need to remove sin in our life. Sin needs to be cleansed from our life. The Holy Scripture, I like the way how the psalmist David always mentioned that if the, you are on the Almighty side, all your battles will be fought for you. Every single battle. So what is carnival for God? That's nothing. God can dismiss all the works of that and we can have a wonderful health institution that is naturally based as priest um, said to us because we recognize in 2018 that the healthcare system has been just practicing on us in truth we've been casualties of war but if we have to be conscious and go back to Eden we would recognize that Almighty has already given us our medicine it is there but because of fear and what has been instilled in us, we have forgotten that our manual for health was in Genesis. And so we have been practicing all other things What's apart that from what Genesis told us. What's it? The fruits, the bitter herbs, the nuts. This is our food. This is our medicine. The, the prana energy, this is how we are being healed in our cells. Oxygen therapy, you know, that is how a body is healed. But even beyond that, the focus of tonight in our love therapy session, we also have to deal with the, the issue of trauma. You see, as a human being, I always tell people, the human being is made up of the soul, emotions, and matter. And if in our healthcare practice we only focus on one arm, we are not healing in a holistic way. If we have to heal an individual, we have to heal individual souls firstly. Then we have to heal the energies in their body that is not in alignment. And then we have to deal with the matter, which is the blood and the blood marrow and, and the cells and the tissues and the organs. If we are only working in isolation, then we will not heal completely. And so the enemy knows that. So he has divided it. 
so healthcare practitioners work in isolation with only matter so they only deal with your organs your kidneys your liver your brain your breast your eyes your nose your tongue then we have the spiritual entity which is called the church the church deals with our soul and we capitalize on if we have sin in our life we have to get right and we have to be cleansed then when it comes to the energy then we go to ancient practices of where we align the energies in our body now if all of these departments are isolated then we are never healed completely but if we join together as god because the the divine concept of god zion is a unification it's it's a harmony that exists and for individuals to be healed whole we must join the soul the energy and the matter into oneness and consciousness and love how do you do that for people how do we do it so in my coaching practice what we do so we you practice on people too um we coach people we say coach you're coaching practice. We coach individuals. Okay. Okay. When an individual recognizes that there is a disorder in their life, um, we have a few disorders. Can we look at some of them? Yeah, you have about yeah, you have a couple of minutes. Okay, we have some disorders that exist. I, for some reason, when it comes to our health, um, persons do not really take charge of our health we don't want to use best practices we don't want to be empowered uh, like you always say when when we like Lazarus ready to die then we come but we need to learn to be conscious in individuals and I call it I say that also to myself when I speak to us uh, brothers and sisters we have to be intentional with anything that we do um, for the session today I I looked at um, disorders in relationships and some of the disorders that we have in our relationships one of them is called bipolar all right bipolar is a condition that is marked by extreme shifts in moods or depression how can an individual get to a point where they are so moody and depressed and at the the slip of a moment they can shift from one mood to another they're never stable they're never um a whole individual in their mental capacity they're always shifting you know that individual has to be healed from the core of their soul priest okay with somebody with bipolar now um conventional medicine might tell you that that individual will have to go on some form of drug therapy to balance the brain um, and they're not wrong entirely but in my coaching what I do with my patients is that when they come in we allow them to recognize that the planet that we live in is laden with a consciousness of what we call sin and because of sin sin brought in illnesses it brought in diseases it brought in disorders it brought in all sorts of dysfunctions that is because the consciousness of individuals has dropped from christ consciousness now when an individual is operating not in christ consciousness you will have disorders in you okay so now i have to coach my clients to bring them back to who they are the god in them okay so what we do we deliver that individual and the only way individuals can be delivered is if they are covered with the anointed blood of Jesus Christ so we deliver them from their sin because when you are delivered from sin the entities which is the spirits the principalities the powers that are out there you know they so have so, no so, so hold I, on you so if I don't believe in Jesus Christ so if you me. don't believe in Jesus and if, if I believe in Allah or I believe in Haile Selassie, mm -hmm. so or Marcus Garvey or Buddha, mm -hmm. so I cannot be delivered. Okay, so you mentioned a number of spiritual leaders. Now, by bringing these individuals into the mix, eh, you have now um, opened up the platform to assume that I am talking about a state of separation. I'm and, the, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm speaking, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm speaking you, on a platform you said, you said of that, that, unification the, and almighty. The only way, mm -hmm. you said the only way that the person can be delivered mm -hmm. 
is by the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah, so exactly. what I am saying is Buddha and Allah and Marcus Garvey and Selassie and all of these individuals never had an issue with Jesus Christ. These individuals operated from Christ consciousness, from love and forgiveness. And if you operate in, in the, the consciousness of love and forgiveness, even if you do not know his name as the Isa or the um, Yahshua or Jesus, you operate from Christ conscious thinking and you are in one with the Most High. All right? So it doesn't matter what spectrum of belief you believe in, Jesus Christ, his name, his supreme kingship name is the name that any entity will bow down and fall down from. And he operated from what we call the power of choice and free will, love and forgiveness. It was the, the Esau, or well, Jesus, when he walked on planet earth, he said, the enemy has nothing on me. You know why? Because in the Esau, in the Jesus, he operated from the consciousness of Almighty in love. He, he, he embodied the consciousness of pranal love energy. And he also encompassed the thinking of forgiveness. That is why the Isa could tell you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Bless them. And even when he came to expire and to actually demonstrate because when he came the the main reason he came was to demonstrate the fullness of what love is i know the 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 jewish race is fixated on blood but this is not what i'm focusing his reason for coming was to demonstrate the fullness of what love is all right so that is why even when he was persecuted and put to death he was still able to cry out and say father forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Now, when you operate in that consciousness, priest, the enemy has nothing in common with you. But if you are a spiritual leader or your brother or sister, and you say you are following the, the, the philosophy of Zion, and you are preaching righteousness, but the very enemies, the carnival people and the ministers who have endorsed this type of evil lifestyle, but you have hatred in your heart you have bitterness in your heart you have animosity in your heart you have negative energy towards these individuals flesh and blood how do you expect the power of almighty to work in you you are actually an oracle for the very evil entities that are controlling the spirit of carnival to also operate in you. Therefore, you are in common like the revelers. You are in common like the promoters of carnival. And so you are powerless. You have no power to condemn anything. You have no, not condemn, you have no power to disarm anything because you are equally in common with the very spirits that are propagating this lifestyle. So it makes you common just because you, you, you condemn it? You are common with it because you have characteristics within you that is in common with the evil one. So if you hit, if you hit, because mm -hmm. remember, you know, that, that, um, they say Jesus walked 2000 years ago, Yes. you know, and you know that there is Western and Eastern Christianity. Okay, yeah. Okay. And then you know that that the, that, that the Rome and the model of Christianity that we have is, okay, for instance, for instance, because you have, you have people outside there who don't really believe in, in that whole Bible thing, mm -hmm. right? The people will tell you, well, um, this is an allegoric thing that was copied mm. and there are even books that tells you of the 16 crucified saviors people okay. who have gone through that specific process you know because what we have lost because you know people have really lost the message mm -hmm. okay because the allegory of christ the allegory okay, it's an allegory it's it's even if a man walked 2,000 years ago, there was a man that walked 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. There was a man that walked in today, someplace living the life of Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, the message that is actually lost, because when, when someone says, and this is the thing that 
we have to be very careful about when we say that only right the only name that someone can be or the only this or the only that or the only I believe that if a Catholic person is sincere and then they do their rosaries every day and they fast during the Lent and they practice whatever spiritual doctrine that they're supposed to practice after a point in time they're going to get out of religiousness and come to spirituality mm -hmm. whereby they would, they would actually leave that level of Catholic or Pentecostal or Adventist or they'd just be mm -hmm. a spiritual being you know I, I, I don't really ascribe to that only type of thing there. I don't, I don't ascribe to that. Right? I believe that there are people, Muslims, outside there that don't even know that name Jesus, you know, because Jesus don't even occur in Hebrew nor Amharic. Mm -hmm. It's Jesus, Yahshua. Mm -hmm. You know, even in, in little old, old Spanish, you know, J don't really sound like G. You understand? It's Jesus. Right? And Latin and all them things there. So, when we operate from a little English fixation, you remember it's a fixation, that English thing is something that was pounded down our, our, our head, you know. You know, our foreparents' tongues were cut. So, we never know about, you know, Jumbo, you know, Kiswahili, you understand? Or... Tabarak, Amarik, you understand? So many of the languages of our ancestors were actually taken away from us by force. The tongues were clipped that they wouldn't teach that to their children. So then when you tell a slave child or a child of a king that was in exile that he has to use a name that was brought down by the, oppress uh, by the oppressors. Remember, yeah, that's the oppressor thing, you know? And even French it pronounced like that. That's just the English people, brethren and sister, I mean, Queen Victoria and people, that is their, that's these people, their language. You know, so, them type of words, them, them things, they, they don't even exist. You understand? These things, they are things that have their own little science to it by just repeating it. Because, you know, words are vibrations. Because all of us know it's Jess, it's J E S, and us is Jess us. So even as Rastafari, we say Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Even as we say Jesus, J E S is Jess and us is us. You know, where we say John Marcus, Emmanuel, Selassie, I and us. So most of these things, they are allegoric and they are representative for a time and for a season. So in Christ's season, Christ's season was a season where he had to be crucified. Mm. You know, as a Christ man, nobody will come and crucify me. You know, Christ came to show us how to conquer death and hell. You understand? So, for the man example, you see the man example already. Right? So, you see that when he had to carry his cross, he carried it alone and all these different type of things. Nobody come and stand up for him. Right? And everything that he do, nobody come and stand up for him. Nobody come. No one come. Who come? No one come. Who come? Just one to whom man was at the foot of his cross and the man who helped him carry his cross and the human can wipe his face and this is a miracle and kind of thing. But the allegory of it is that the message in it all is, is, is that is that you stand alone. You understand? That like Daniel, which is the same Christ figure. Mm -hmm. You know, when you believe in something so much that you're willing to stand alone for it. So Daniel believed in praying to the east so much mm -hmm. as a Christ figure, right? He stood up for it. He never eat no flesh. He never eat, drink no rum. You know, he, just, he was a Rasta man. A Rasta man, man was he? You know? Right? So the man said, you ain't no flesh. You know, he not drinking no rum. And just check and you're going to see who are going to be fatter and rounder. And Daniel said, Rap Mushak and okay, Abed, the Negro, the Negro yeah, you know, was... <laughs> was the fattest of them all so we have to really and learn to put things into perspective into clear perspective because you know we don't want to 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 turn our people into 
into a mental slaves. You know, whereby people move away from them God selves and look for some external entity to actually save them. You know, yes, I worship his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie as God Almighty. Yes, I worship Marcus Mosiah Garvey as God. Yes, I worship King Emmanuel Charles Edward as God, the black Christ in flesh who come and teach us the Melchizedek order. I worship. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Okay. Right, but I don't worship them in a way whereby I don't see the God in myself. <laughs> whereby I forget that they came to show the true essence that they come and teach. Okay, Marcus come and teach you well as a black man. Because remember, you, know, you, were, you were enslaved. Right? 1900, 1887, 1848. Right? That's when the slavery abolished. No black, that's 1848, you know. Right? All 1880, all 1890s, people still are slaves and them things there. Right? So that, that's, your, that's history. That's history. And then Marcus Garvey was able to come, right? And ra rise up over 19 million people following. Establish the UNIA. Have ships up on the water, have factories, black dolls, black this, black restaurant, black this, black that, and make the black man check that he's not a slave. He's not, also, he's not, he's not only supposed to be carrying water and breaking stone for people. So he shifted the consciousness of the black man, whereby the black man became proud to be black. Right? So then, that's a godly work. No other person in heaven or in earth can come back down. Nobody, no one. No one can come and do the work that Marcus Garvey did. Nobody can come and do that. It's obvious in history. They'll hide it. All different type of place. Right? But that's a work. If, if you erase Marcus Garvey from history, you wouldn't be where you are there. No, would I be where I am there. No. Mm -mm. Gone. So Marcus Garvey came as a savior. The Christ. In that particular time. To actually save the black man. From that oppression of the white will and people is with close specs on their nose. You understand? Believe it's ugly. And you know, you know, all these different type of things. People and people still do that. Bleach up themselves and put them and bleach up their hair. So the consciousness that these people brought to us is that God consciousness in self. So it's not a consciousness where you have to say, well, boy, if I don't believe in that, boy, I go make it. No, nah, man. Mm, I don't believe in that. Mm -mm. I don't believe in that. I believe that the caress, the caress, Heru, the Horus, which is the first Christ. All these people there, man, and people have Zoroaster and all different type of Christ figures who died and resurrected over all them thousands of years. What they came to teach is that God is in flesh. He said, if you do his will, you'll do greater works than him. You understand? Peter was walking on water too. You know, until the man lose faith. They were taking demons out of people and healing the sick. Until they lose faith and the man had to come and do it for them again. And, eh. So, the genuine message that God in flesh. You know, look into yourself to see God. That you could be God in yourself. You understand? And stop sitting and looking for some strange entity to drop something if invisible and dead god philosophy like people people love that dead god thing and god died to save us all and thing so that god dead now and thing you know so god can't see you god can't talk to you and say man stop drinking the rum and thing you know man stop smoking the cigarette stop eating the pork you understand so if god was always telling you stop eating the pork brethren stop drinking the rum don't smoke the cigarette. Stop cursing them bad words there, honorable. What am I doing? You don't get vexed. If, you know, if God come and... If God starts speaking to you and start... Man, people get vexed and curse God and all that kind of thing. Eh? You understand? Because people like a dead God. So you sin. You go to God in a corner. And everything blessed. No, man. God in flesh. The man say you have to see God in yourself. To know God in yourself. So at least you could have know that. Okay, all right. You can treat yourself godly. And you can treat your sister godly. You gotta treat your brother godly because if you see God in yourself, that you understand that, as Marcus Garvey teaches us, that what Christ do, you could do it. You could do what Christ do. Because remember, Christ used to poo poo, you know. Christ used to poo poo. He used to pee pee. He used to vomit. He bleed. 
He used to be hungry. He used to sweat. He used to have to bathe. Every single thing a man went through. This man went through it. And the glory that he came to show us is that as a man, flesh and blood, who came out of a vagina of a human, right? He was able to be holy. I, I, I'm, I'm no sinner, you know. This is the kind of thing that people say, oh boy, you, the boy is well of sinner. I'm not no sinner. I am not a sinner. Mm -mm. And I'm, I'm, I have no shame in coming out of darkness because the home of the woman is dark. Right? I'm no sinner. I'm not a sinner. I'm no sinner. I was never bring, brought forward in no sin. Me a sinner who? What? Remember when Christ came, people used to get killed for, for carrying a piece of wood on the Sabbath, you know? Remember that, right? Christ came, people used to get killed for carrying a piece of wood on the Sabbath. People used to get killed, stoned to death for going on the field and, and, and break a corn to eat on the Sabbath. Yeah, man. You walking on the Sabbath, stoned to death, brethren. Christ do all them things there. Eh? So happen, you a sinner? Oh, no, man, just because he's Christ. He can do that. Yeah, so he come and show you a look, right? Just because he's Christ, he can do that. But you yourself, because he never come and make you a servant, you know, he come and make you a partaker in the kingdom. Come and give you a brotherhood. That you could not just be his servant, but his brethren. So then, yeah, man, you could, yeah, you could leave and them type of things there. So, and I'm no sinner. I'm, I'm not a sinner. I'm not, yeah, I'm not no sinner. And I wasn't shaping no sin. And no, no iniquity. And I'm a holy being that was brought forward in this particular time there to uplift my people. Right, so just a point of clarification for one, two little points that you made. So at least you know, we have a balance. You know, because we have to be careful as a people understanding that. Because it's the same thing that happened to us. Right? Because our, our oppressors, remember, you know, they used to cut our human belly and bet and say, it's a boy, it's a girl. It's a boy, it's a girl. It's a boy, it's a girl. And click the bread. You know? These same people, we follow the same protocol of medicine. That tells us that if uh, to give a caesarean section to cut open our woman. And some doctors so we get they cut open longitudinally. Right? Instead of following the longer hand lines to ensure that there are no scars or whatever it is. Because we know all them science in Kemet. Right? So at the end of the day, we are following the same medicine of our same oppressors, right, who used to kill us. So you believe that a man that used to oppress you and kill you going to be able to, to provide you with a pill that's going to bring down your blood pressure. Nah. He's going to produce a chemical that's going to heal your cancer. Nah. He's going to produce a substance that's going to bring down your cholesterol. Nah. You're going to drink that pill every single day. Your sugar is going to be high all the time. Then you're going to go on the insulin. And your kidney is going to go bad. Your feet are going to rot. Your eyes are going to go blind. You're going to dead. Same thing if high blood pressure. You're going to drink that pill every day, every day. Please kill us, boy. And that pill every day, boy. My pill is still high. You're still dead in high blood pressure. We can't expect no good from our oppressors. Right? So then, how then now as a people, we could accept. Remember, you remember, you know, there are realms of existence. You have the physical realm and you have the spiritual realms. How can we, how can we accept spiritual somebody going to tell me that have oppressed me for years? That that's the type of spirituality that I supposed to follow. So we come to the point, priest, where we are not promoting or we're not saying anything about a dead Christ. And I hope that's not what you got from the no, short. That's what I mean. The we, short we, 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 remember, not, you know, remember, you know, you have a lot of people watching. You know? Yeah, we're, we're not. And, and we're, I, I know that people are very religious and okay. people who. So some right. people are already saying amen. Okay, so we're, we're not talking about a dead Christ. I, I need to establish this point carefully because in light of the carnival season, I want to bring over a point. And this is this. There was a historical figure named Jesus Christ. We don't want to go into everything on that point here. But what I want to bring to the listening audience is this. As you rightly said, 
Was it Marcus Garvey? You said he was the savior to empower the black man on his his role as a black man, right? You, mm -hmm. you did mention that, which is true. So here now I can say that Jesus Christ was the Christ who came to empower the human race on what we call Christ consciousness, the exercising of free will. Okay? Priest, if let, let's use me as an example. But, but his name still, Jesus. His name still wasn't Jesus. Man. Okay, but our discourse is not on on the okay, name. Yeah, we yeah, we just yeah. want to use this but, but, uh, this but the name this figure. Important. So what if I call you Carol? What's up, Carol? Carol. But you see, there's so many issues around the name thing, and we're not yeah. having a discourse so just on say language. Christ, then. Just say on Christ. Christ. Okay. Yeah, just say Christ. Oh, yeah. Can we call him Emmanuel? Because Matthew yeah. called him um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Emmanuel, yeah, 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 God yeah, yeah, with us. Yeah, okay, yeah, so Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Yeah, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Jesus get when him. Emmanuel came, he came at a pivotal time in Earth's history when the perceived consciousness or the reality at that time was so I, I would just use this word negative it was so negative if, if you want to talk about what negative would be it would be crime it would be diseases it would be infirmities it would be what you would say right now we have pandemics on on the planet right now so he came at that point in time to change the 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 the, the mindset the mindset of the den populace and the mindset that he brought with him was this you have the power within you to exercise your free will, all right? And that free will that you are going to exercise, it should be in harmony with source consciousness, okay? So that is why he said to individuals, if your enemy does you something, are you going to operate from the consciousness of determinism? Your enemy slap you, you slap him back. Nah, I wouldn't Your slap enemy me. I, I, curse you, you would, curse him back. What I I'm would, just saying. Yeah, but I won't let my enemy slap me. Because you are on a conscious yeah. level. Yeah, I would, I would, yes. But when Christ came to the planet, people were operating from a conscious level priest of not higher consciousness. Okay. If a man slap you, they will slap him back. If a man stab me, I will stab him back. It was determinism, and cause and I... effect. Yes, I... cause and effect. You do this, I do that. But Christ came with another consciousness. I know we've been fixating on the blood and all of that, but no, that was the, 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 the Jewish um, practices. We have to understand the true concept of why Emmanuel came. Emmanuel came to enlighten, to bring us up to our Christhood, our God status, so that we know that we operate like how God operates. Because when God looks, oh, some people have an issue with God, when Almighty looks at the consciousness of this planet, sometimes people always put Almighty in a box like a human being. Oh, Almighty is so sad and seeing all the, the, the sin and the evil. Look at the filth that is going to be happening tomorrow. And Almighty is so grieved at that. That is how man consciousness is. Isaiah, a Christ conscious prophet, he said that the thoughts of Almighty is higher than our thoughts. It's not like our thoughts. When we talk about this thing of lower consciousness and, 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 and negative energy, we have to understand that Almighty is all-knowing and he knows everything. And these things, well, I know you don't use the word sin, it doesn't move him. I, do, I, I use sin. Oh, you use the word sin. I, I thought, I, I, I thought I, I, you I, don't I'm use the word sin. I'm not a sinner. I wasn't born but in you sin. you recognize there is something you. called sin, yeah, well, I mean, which is yeah. just lower conscious energy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I, was right? not, I was not born in So when sin. Christ came to the planet, he had to introduce this. That's why he came as the manifestation of love. He came with the this teaching of love and forgiveness. And you brought to my attention that what if somebody don't believe in the name Jesus or this man Jesus? That's why I tell you, my coaching is so holistic that it doesn't matter what religious or spiritual background you come from. People's souls can be healed because everybody believes in love. That's why the Bible was clear. 
There is no separation in God. God can reach any people group because God is love. We might have strongholds or names. And that is exactly what Ephesians was, was written to enlighten us. That the battle that exists on this planet is not a battle against people, flesh and blood. It's a spiritual battle. But if we get ourselves wallowing in, in battles against flesh, we are also caught in the trap and the devices of the evil one ourselves. We are F operating F in dark energy. That's a lot of ignorance too, huh? Eh? Exactly. So that, we are not on higher consciousness. That we as a people, see like certain certain discussions, like even this, I don't really have this type of discussions with just anyone. Okay. And I don't even entertain because at the end of the day, a lot of people don't read it. So historically, there are many, you know, historic books. There are many things that you just need to read right and, and people don't read so it doesn't make sense for me to have a, a, a like an intelligent discussion with someone who doesn't have like the the information okay so people get emotional about this type of things but as we as our knowledge increase as we we are more aware of our reality what has shaped us then this would shape our 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 perception of everything is perception perception yeah everything is perception it's, it's how you perceive your reality you know so when i when someone is sick right because remember you know that this thing there this abracadabra thing because i i have clients who come to me and the clients that die the fastest are the clients that say boy i put it in the in the in, in the name of, of jesus and they are those that die fast they die fastest man. <laughs> they die fastest man this will die fastest man fastest mm -hmm. but because they never put it in their own hands you know create the, 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 the almighty never send them to christ never send them to go and eat junk christ never send them to go and drink alcohol to go and smoke cigarettes and you know to to do certain type of things people as you go against nature because that's what that's what sin really is you know you are perpetuating actions that's against the natural flow of nature so there are, there are going to be imbalances within your physical structure. So what you eat, what you think, right? So if it is that you come and you're sick mm -hmm. and you're not well and you want, oh, you wait it, oh, yeah, man. But I, pray, I pray every day and I think and I put it in the hands of, mm -hmm. you're gone. The first thing you're supposed to do is take responsibility for your actions. You're supposed to say, well, look, my, my Lord, you know, when I sit down and I look at it, you know, man, you know how much chicken and pork I eat already? Mm -hmm. How much barbecue, how much rum I used to drink. Now, at the end of the day, you're going to say, Well, look, you have identified the evils that you were perpetuating. Not nobody was doing that. You were doing that for yourself, you know. Because remember, you know, good man is God in flesh, and evil man is Satan in flesh. Mm -hmm. Because the spirit of good and evil manifests within that same flesh that you have there. So, mm -hmm. same way of woman, goddess and Sataness. So, at the end of the day, your works that you perpetuate will determine your actions. Like one plus one is two. 1 plus 2 is 3, 1 plus 4 is 5, 1 plus 6 is 7, 1 plus 9 is 10. So whatever variable you add, your outcome is going to actually change. So the first step in healing is to take responsibility. Not to put everything in the hands of God and say this and that and that. Because God, so if it is that you take responsibility, then you say, but you got breast cancer and then. Then you understand the effects of, of stress, right, of being depressed, then you know, they pray and cry, they pray and cry, and you're going to die fast, right? But the minute that you have you have understood it, you say, Boy, you know why all them years there I've been holding that grudge against my father for all them things that he's been doing wrong and thing and this and that and this. Oh boy, daddy, I forgive you, eh? I love you. Oh daddy, that's gone. But right now that you are ten percent closer to healing. Oh, gosh, every time I think about that day, my husband used to kick me and stomp on me. I just get that cold sweat against me. It's not, it wasn't my fault. And I, for, I, I, I was a good woman. I forgive myself. I love myself. Right? Oops. Yeah, you, you, you're 40% in, in, in towards your healing. So, oh, boy. Them chicken and I used to eat plenty of chicken, eh? Suck a lollipop and then drink a cook. Every day I drink in a cook. Eh, I, I had to stop that. I have to start even to heal myself. Eh, you're 70% on your way. So as you begin to take responsibility for your actions as a diabetic, as a hypertensive, 
polycystic ovarian syndrome uh, any condition that you have right it's not about just putting it in the hands of whoever you praise in it's about you as an individual taking that responsibility right so that, that that's what that religiousness have done to people that they, they get so religious that they fail to work fail to do what they need to do and expect that they're going to sit down and pray and everything going to be all right no sir no sir you know so we must have that full perception that understanding that's why it's important for us to study you know because there are different levels of spirituality and there is there are different levels of of thoughts and different levels of understanding because remember you could still survive and live and breathe if someone cut off your whole frontal lobe that deals with your whole level of intuitiveness character you understand foresight vision you know even in 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 in, in psychiatry mm -hmm. and them things there they used to literally perform a surgery where they would put a piece of metal or laser through the nasal cavity and, 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 and cut off the frontal lobe for people with personality disorders. Mm -hmm. Right? So they used to do these things there. You understand? So at the end of the day, when we understand exactly where we come from, who we are, what we have been through. So when I come in the healthcare arena and for wellness, I went to medical school. I used, to, I used to look at all the studies and say, well, look, you know, that drug for Latin Americans is 40% effective. That drug for Asians mm -hmm. is 20% effective. That drug for African Americans is 5% effective. I say, but wait. Mm -hmm. Right? So then I understood that, that there was a great difference in your genealogical makeup, your DNA, who you are. So that thing say, oh, well, we are all one people. Nah. No. All of us don't use the same drugs. The differences that we have that separate us must be considered. Every single difference that we have as people. You as a Chinese. The Chinese who drive and you don't even see you on your side. You just turn on you and thing because of how his eyes is. You don't see you. Right? All them minibus we have there coming down, them 14 seaters and then 12 seaters. When you go in them, you, you squeeze up so. Chinese that make them and Japanese, small people. Right? So if it was a black man in, you don't see the seats have more space. Right? So the same way our medicines, the things that we're supposed to be consumed, these things they are created based upon a genealogical makeup. But why is it that all of our scientists, the people who go and study biochemistry, pharmacology, Right? Why none of them do come forward into St. Lucia and we begin to synthesize pharmaceutical medicines then that are aligned to our own genetics? Right? So when we examine, that's, that's how I examine things, I personally. I say, but wait, look at the healthcare system. There is no medicine anywhere that you could find, no medicine, no drug that, you, that, that was created specifically for black people by a black person none and then you could look at the indians producing their own thing the chinese producing their own thing and apart from the chinese producing their own medicines then they still have china chinese medicine the acupuncture acupressure that they take from us you know, you know is our 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 thing that we use, we use our what you call that? them 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 sharp pecan eh? them, them sharp kasi the kasi tree them things we use them things the ancient time and look at your manuscripts Look at the papyrus of Ani. So all these different things we did from ancient time, we've lost it. So for us now, we have take, we have swallowed. We open up our mouth. We don't ask what's in the pot. Mm -hmm. And we've swallowed the entire Western medicine concept without questioning it. Killing off our people. Right? Without questioning it at all. Without no knowledge. Without think. Without research. Without study. The Chinese don't do that. They still drink the bush teas. Mm. They still do the acupuncture. They have live open heart surgery on a table with acupuncture needles to use as anesthetics. The Indians have Ayurvedic medicine. Everybody have their thing. But we now, we despise what we have because we believe it's bad. So this is what we have to check ourselves on our perception how do we perceive what we have 
how is it that we could utilize things for our own upliftment? For our and, and don't feel bad about it. That's what self love is. Self love is I pre scalash, loving pre scalash for pre scalash being pre scalash. Now just because I'm a black man, yes, I'm an African. I was born in I was born in an in a, in, a, in a pond, but I'm still a lion, man. If an alligator born, or if an alligator born, it's an alligator, man. I was born right there in the West Indies, but I mean I'm still an African being. That means that now I, I have to look at everything from that perspective. That's it. I mean, come on. So if I love me, then the immediate around me with my wife and my children, my mothers, my my father, my brothers, my sisters, and in extent to my race of people. So as a scientist, I am unapologetic. I am unapologetic to say that I took time out to create and to work on medicines that would be aligned to my people. Because no one was doing it. Remember, I go to medical school and I see it, you know. So I create medicine aligned to my people. And after I've taken care of my people, then I could start to think about other people. Unapologetically. That's me, pre scalash, right? So then I will take care of myself first. Take care of my wife, my children, my mother, my father, my brother, my sister, my auntie, my wife. And then, that's, the, that's self-love. So in the spiritual realms, I see it exactly the same. Right? So many of the things that these so-called missionaries used to call us pagans for and them type of things. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't accept them. Right? So... I know our time is up, my sister, so I, I'll give you a, um, a, a, a two minutes just to okay. give us your closing words because our time is up. You see, okay. we didn't even take any calls tonight. So, Prisklash, here is the elephant in the room. Where is that elephant? <laughs> if there's an elephant, I'd have seen that. An elephant is big, you know. So, in the scientific community and in the healthcare community, um, men and women have realized that a drug that can be prescribed for one individual will work on one person's conscious body in one way and another person in a totally different way and whilst you sat in medical school and you saw how different drugs were created for different what you call it race of people genealogical makeups ge genealogical makeups what i have seen priests and you know i i trust almighty and i have been very successful with the therapy of love because love is the fingerprint on everything everything is made up of the energies of love because everything is energy down to its minute molecule okay or atom everything is energy and when we use almighty's method of healing which is the food that we eat because our food is our medicine when we exercise our free will and we become conscious as you say we will take initiative in forgiving people and healing the traumas that we have gone through in our experiences and in our relationships with people and as you said this is where the healing comes when we recognize the traumas that we have gone through and we send love and forgiveness 80 percent of your cells are back into operation just by forgiving and by extending love eating everything that is natural and what was created by almighty and what is so important about the food that we eat the scientific community takes the primary producer and try to come up with a compound and we trust that you see our empowerment of our minds is very important if we have to take a prime product to produce something else why don't use the prime product because the prime product has everything that almighty has in it already in its right chemical composition for the absorption already in the bloodstream and the cells and it has all the oxygen that is needed already at that level to heal the cells so everything is already in our food everything is already in the alignment of our emotions as you mentioned the acupuncture so i will just end by saying the essence of the almighty is in all creation and creation needs to 
be lifted up in our conscious mind because this is where the seat of our godhood is in in the mind that's why the christ said let this mind be in you which was also in me that's the christ conscious concept of love and forgiveness because even if we speak with the tongues of men and, and angels and we have not love you know what we become a sounding gong or brass something that just making noise you know but the christ said faith hope and love and the greatest of these three is love so i will stick with the theory that love love energy heals all blockages and i will continue to encourage our brothers and sisters and even those who are ready to go and take part in carnival i will send out beams of love into the atmosphere so that the godhood the god consciousness would be um, um would elevate and then they will come to the state and they realize but i am a royal priest and priestess why would i be on the road naked exposing my divine temple you see when our consciousness is is really low we don't see who we are so we have to send out beams of love and forgiveness into the atmosphere so our brothers and sisters can become awakened to who they are in christ and then they will be able to shine that light so that you know, others you know, will you know, come you know, in. You know what the, the name Kailash means? Kailash. It's the God of Destruction. <laughs> I would say death to the wicked. <laughs> you see, you see all those people, all the spiritual wicked. Because you remember, you know, see, you fight against spiritual wickedness in high and low places. But right? You, okay, sp you, spell, you fight against spiritual wickedness in high and low places. Death to spiritual wickedness. You understand? You have to mash that. You remember you know, that Christ said he coming for a sword. And he say, he, he say, yeah, he coming for sword. Remember what Christ say again? But remember, remember what, what Christ say again? Remember Christ said that the enemy know him in one he used to, he used to bind Satan you know, mm. and just bind the wicked and them type of things. So, yes, he bind because he actually put an end to death. So there's no, we don't have death. to go. Um, yeah, man, there is that. I mean, the only way. You're in, right. You see. Give thanks. I mean, as our time, our, our time is up. Eh? Yeah. But I mean, death to the wicked. There are some evil entities. There are some real evil, evil. You see, like, that's the will of God, eh? Because, you see, God came and he, he saw, Saul slew thousands, you know? Mm -hmm. And David slew ten thousands. Mm -hmm. You understand that? And God ordained that. Right? For his people. You understand what I'm telling you? So Christ, when Christ tell you he come with a sword, to chop uh, sword words W O R D S and S O S S W O R D. Sword, W O R D S words, right? So the man himself come and his tongue was sharp. Yeah. Right, and he slew a lot of wicked people. He slew them, you know. He slew other people, like, man. So the spiritual wickedness is something that is. That literally, yes, you send love, energy, but it's the same way like a like a sniper and an assassin and thing. You understand? There are spiritual wickedness. You have to snipe and you have to take them out. You know, death to the evil forces and them wicked, evil people who traumatize and kill our people. You understand? And yeah, man, there are some evil, wicked forces that fight because you see the simple thing that you see at them simple like an accident. Mm -hmm. The evil that's in that. that, that Evil and all type of wickedness and all type of thing, people. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, man, we could send the love and send the peace and send the joy and tend the thing. And but yeah, man, you have to burn the fire on the on the ungodly and the evil too. At the end of the day, it's a balance. It's, as man says, life for the righteous and death for the wicked. You know why? Because he say, well, Gentiles what prepare for war and Israel. Prepare to meet your God. That's it. You understand? So at the end of the day, there is a realistic thing. You know, my enemy is disease. See, when I see someone with, with breast cancer, is what I going into? I have to kill this evil demon. Because, you know, that like demonic and demonic, a lot of these diseases are some real evil, evil, evil thing. But, Chris, that is my point. You have a patient with breast cancer. 
You come in with negative energy to, um, kill, negative, the, to kill the disease. There's nothing negative no. about if I if mm -hmm. if I see a lion. Yes. Chopping your throat and 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 and, and flying off your throat and them type of things. Okay, but everything is representative. You know? Yes, I know. Right. I know. You walking down the street and you see this little five year old sister and some big old nasty little fella all over him and thing. And what, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Well, because of your love for the innocence of that life of that child, right? There are some things that are justified. So when you give the man a lash behind his head, a slap behind his head, and fly him on the side there, there's nothing wrong in that. That's love because love is not, is, is not stupid to do. Mm -hmm. That's not love. You, 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 you take a check. What to you, my lord? Be yourself there, honorable. Why, why you judge the elephant like that, honorable? Sometimes, man, your, 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 your harshness and the, your tone of voice and that force that you punish and you deal with, you know, punishment is love. Are you aware that punishment is love? It's because you love your child. I say, spare the rod, spoil the child. The rod of correction. So it's not that you love it. The punishment itself is love. So at least that person knows. Because remember, even God himself, you know, you have heaven. And you have hell, right? So you have reward, then you have punishment. You understand that? So then our creator operates in that divine love and understanding, but he creates and he destroys. Right? So then there is is that because you you punish someone, that means that you don't have love inside of you or you don't love them. So even my own children, if I punish them, I say, my Lord. That phone there, you lose that phone there, you know. Actually, that phone there is, is my son's phone. Uh, yeah, my, uh, my son's phone. You know, punishment, I use it. Right? So then, he might cry, he might feel away. And then I take my phone. But at the end of the day, I love him. And that, that action was out of love. So the action, not just the action, might seem like as if it's hatred, but it's out of sincere love. So I say, you know, there are some evil entities outside there. Eh? And there are some wickedness and there are some evil witchcraft and some some real satanic thing that people doing outside they're deaf to that and destruction down to dirty babylon you know i mean definitely you know, with no apology you know, these things they have to go as long as these things they persist the righteous will never suffer because never never, never strive the righteous will always suffer because you know, the righteous is suffering and lots of people out say you know how, how much people how many people suffering if sickness and disease no, how evil it is for the people who are who are feeding our people all these deadly foods. Come on, man. Come on, come on. Oh, I love them. Yeah, I love them. Yeah, I love them. I love myself. I love them. But I'm not going to say because I love them, I'm not going to institute punishment. Of course. As a leader, you're a leader of a country and thing. There are times that man have to, to go into some seclusion and thing and get some some you understand? Yeah. Trust me, yeah man. Mm -hmm. I have no problem in that. Have no problem in punishment, no problem in punishing with love and if a smile too. You don't, you don't, you don't have to be upset when you punish. You have to be upset. You have to be upset. You could smile and you could punish. Don't leave your child to do evil and thing. And because you have little children that do evil things, evil, evil, evil things, and you allow them to perpetuate in that evil, 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 evil way, and then they become consumed by the spirit of evil. And they become the very entity of Satan themselves, and they do evil, evil the most evil thing. That's because we allow it to, to grow. We don't cut it off. Say, so cut off the wicked. That they shall be no more. And as the creator say, even to the third and fourth generation. No apology. So give thanks definitely for the divine love of God. That, 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 that peaceful and charming and that warm love. But it's the same God that actually allows the hurricane and the earthquake and the tidal wave and the tsunami. And the brimstone and fire to fall. Give thanks. So in everything we have to give thanks. Even in the life, the giving birth and the death and the destruction, everything we give thanks. Because the hands of God is in it. If the Father allow it, then his hands is in it. Even our political leaders, they say the voice of the people is the voice of God. So it's God that allow it to happen. So every leader that's there in power today is because of the will of God. That's it, brethren. Even if you feel well, you think, I oh, want God, the Almighty, the Creator. He, he is in the midst of that. So we give thanks. And you know, don't be afraid to pray for the death of the 
wicked and the evil entities that destroy our people. Like, don't be afraid to pray against the death of them evil people then. Because it's warfare we're fighting. Warfare we're fighting. Trust me, it's warfare. And many of the simple things we see around the place, very, very, very evil. You know, and we have to consciously, consciously slew them. Consciously with the love of creator and creation that the love and the peace of the earth could actually perpetuate. Because they say, you know, the sympathy that you have for one person on a ship, you're traveling on the ship, there are 5,000 people on the ship, and you see a man there trying to bore a hole in the ship to sink the ship. Oh, John, don't do this, John. John, you could cause harm to the people, John. And you just, John, John, and take on and boo, and you, and you leave John and gone. John continue. Remember, John already make John evil, you know. Because they have people that the evil ways is unrepentable, you know. John will go and John will keep on boring that hole. John bore that hole. And the hole caused the whole ship to sink. And the entire 5,000 people dead. You make John walk the plank. You understand? So we give thanks for the judgment and the balance of the Creator. You can't feel no way about that. You can't feel no way about that. They have a place for everything. And you have to do it with love. For the love of the 5,000. John, brother. For the love of the top 5,000. You know that we have tested your heart. We have weighed it against the feather. And we've seen that. John, I mean, if we leave you there, John, you're going to do it again. You're going to, to destroy the 5,000 saints of the Creator. John, you have to walk the plank. At least walk the plank, jump, jump in the ocean. If you could swim to shore, and congratulations. You understand? So give thanks again for this program. And we, you know, we love the Iron Man thing, you know. And at the end of the day, when it comes to night, you know, sometimes the priest says certain things that the song away, but you know how it is, man. Right? Certain things we can't tolerate. You know, and, and, and we have to put an end to them. Because if we as a people just don't put an end to them, they're going to perpetuate. And our children, children are going to have to deal with it. Right? So if you see somebody doing wrong, burn out the iniquity. Because remember, not the person you're burning out, you know. You're burning out the spiritual wickedness that that person themselves does manifest. So when you correct them, say, what, what, kind of, what kind of foolishness are you doing there, honorable? Stop that. Right? Then they might check themselves. But if you're there and then you... you, you you ain't saying nothing. They'll continue. And that same wickedness will reach your doorstep. And your child might become a victim. Give thanks for your patience. I know we had no calls tonight. I do apologize for that. That we even went on this whole spirit thing a bit too much. Alright? I pray next time that I could talk to you more about your herbs and your little bellyache and your little stomach. Remember tomorrow, Monday, we are open Carnival Monday. We open Liberty. Open on Jeremy Street opposite the old fire station. Come and join us Carnival Tuesday. We are open again. If you have an emergency, if you have a laxative to drink tonight so your belly could get fat tomorrow, come and get that also. I mean, it's your choice. You know, understand? And I don't, I'm not judging you. I'm judging your actions, yes. But I don't hate you because you go to Carnival. I don't. I love you. Right? I don't, I don't hate you because you, you drink rum. I love you. The only reason I'm telling you it's bad is because I love you. I love the eye. Right? I love the eye. So, the only reason I'm saying that is out of the sense here, love in my heart. I love the iron name. So, I must point out these things there to you. I want to be like the parent that stay there and sit you away. The child in all type of wickedness, that the child will end up being thief and murderer. I'll correct them. Right? Let me deliver them from young that they don't get old and become wicked and evil and them type of things. Also. All right? So, may Almighty God bless and keep you. Make his holy face shine upon your holy face. And even if your face is not holy, God's sun will still shine upon it. If you sow a seed, it will still grow. Why? Because the God is a God of justice and equity. Peace and love. Holy love. Blessed love. Blessed.